All right. Good afternoon and welcome to the North 65 Chamber of Commerce monthly meeting. I'm Melissa Bettendorf and I'm the executive director here at the chamber. I'm also joined by Vanessa Hansel, assistant director who will be co-facilitating today's meeting with me. As I mentioned, we will be recording this presentation and the Q&A session. We'll stop the recording um, in the Q&A session. And at that time, you'll have the opportunity to introduce yourself and share updates from your organization. You are encouraged to put your questions and comments in the chat as we move through the presentation, or you can ask them by unmuting during the Q&A session. Today's meeting is sponsored by Shermick Tree Farms. I'd like to introduce Bart Perkins to share a few words about the tree farm. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, our tree farm is in Isanti County. Uh, we specialize in growing and selling, planting trees, large sizes in particular. And we also do um, a wide variety of commercial property maintenance uh, in the Cambridge area and everywhere. Uh, that is all I have today for you. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Bart. Nice to nice to have you here today, and we thank yeah. you for your support. The monthly meeting sponsorship um, is a new opportunity available to our chamber members. And if you're interested in sponsoring a future meeting, please reach out to Vanessa or myself. And now I'd like to introduce today's speaker. Cambridge Mayor Jim Godfrey, who will be sharing the State of the City Address. Please join me in welcoming Mayor Godfrey. With all the mics muted, I can't hear the thunderous applause. I'm sure that's happening right now. <laughs> I, uh, hang on, are you able to see my screen and see me? Yes. And hear me okay too. So let me start presenting here. Yes. All right. So you can hear me well. And now you can hopefully see the splash screen here, which has, it's not on my computer. There it is. Cambridge, Minnesota's opportunity community. Is that true? Yes. Yes. All right. Very good. So I'll get started here. So obviously I'm uh, the mayor of Cambridge, Jim Godfrey. I have the privilege of serving now for two years uh, in the city council before that, uh, when Marlis Palmer was mayor. Um, it's my pleasure to give you what uh, I think is the state of our city. And, uh, you know, you think back a year ago and COVID was just bursting out and we had lockdowns and uh, restrictions and so on. And if you had asked me what I thought the state of the city would be now, a year later, it would have been a lot darker than what I think we actually are experiencing right now. So I don't know if it's surprisingly, but at least thankfully and seemingly the state of the city seems to be in good health. And part of that is because uh, the work the city has been doing, partnering with businesses, with community members, with civic groups, um, with this, the community at large, with the governments of higher levels than us, making sure that we are committed to keeping the community strong despite the pandemic. And there were, there are a number of ways that we did that. And the bulk of my presentation is gonna be talking about what we worked actively on to make sure that we got through the other side of this pandemic in as strong a position as possible. And so one of the things we did is uh, when the CARES Act was enacted and the city got its share from the federal government, we set aside a chunk of that for small business assistance because we knew that uh, small businesses are the life's blood of any um, mid-sized community, small town feeling place like Cambridge. And so 32 different businesses received some form of assistance through the city with about $242,000 being distributed eventually. Um, that's in addition to what businesses may have been available, had, had available through the federal CARES Act and the state CARES Act money. Um, so uh, working with our businesses to keep them afloat in what were very troubling times and what still are uh, difficult times. We also, other than just direct financial assistance, we also other, offered other financial support to our area businesses to keep them going. Uh, we suspended our uh, revolving loan fund payments for those businesses that had a revolving loan from the city. We, uh, for the entire community, suspended our late fee penalties for the water and sewer bills. 
And uh, we also then help some various uh, smaller businesses with loans for them to use for equipment replacement so that they could keep uh, functioning um, whatever that their particular equipment needs were. This would be outside of things like HVAC systems and so on to keep the business safe. This was just their core working thing so that uh, they could continue to serve our, our community. Um, in terms of helping uh, specifically restaurants, we uh, made sure that we worked with them to arrange safe and adequate outdoor dining for the restaurants that wanted it, including Sidelines, Chapala, Leader, Cambridge Bar and Grill, and others on a smaller scale. Um, one of the things we did was provide barricades, uh, especially on 2nd Avenue to close the 2nd Street, 2nd Avenue it was, to allow for outdoor dining, especially outside of the bar, uh, Sidelines and uh, Chapala. That was so popular, in fact, that uh, recently we put a survey out, should we continue um, doing that for this year? And I don't know, I, uh, Evan, you can jump in here, but I think it was like 180 responses, 100% of them, all of them said, yes, do it again. So on uh, the city council meeting at the beginning of this month, we authorized the placement of those barricades again this summer to allow for outdoor dining. Um, besides the barricades, we also provided traffic cones for restaurants. Um, when back in the day when it was only pick up and uh, take out orders, there were a number of places that needed to have traffic cones in front of their uh, restaurants, especially along Main Street, so that uh, their customers could safely come, uh, know where to go and be able to safely pick up their takeout orders. Um, and then sort of an overall for the whole community thing, we really focused on making sure that the mental health of our community was continuing um, and, and being uh, improved by continuing with our outdoor concerts and our kids programming and so on, still while maintaining those COVID-19 protocols and social distancing requirements and so on. Um, this is a benefit not just for the, the community, but also for the businesses because, you know, it, during the height of uh, quarantine time, people were stuck in their houses for weeks, maybe months at a time. This gave them on a nice summer day a chance to get out and be socially distanced and enjoy some music. It generated traffic in Cambridge. And so hopefully the businesses benefited by having access to more customers than they otherwise would have had, had they just stayed at home. So, um, you know, we made, we made that commitment to continue those programs uh, despite the uh, COVID quarantines that were going on. Other things that, other ways that we work to help the community stay strong, we partnered with Cambridge Isani High School to provide outdoor hockey um, practice and games. The, uh, these were so popular and I live streamed a number of these games because there still were, um, what do they call that, the occupancy restrictions. You couldn't have people sitting side by side even in the outdoor stands at 30 below as it was one evening. Um, so I, I helped with the students live streaming those hockey games. And Care 11 eventually picked up on the story and they came up and did a nice feature. Uh, the high school team was playing St. Francis uh, at, the out, at the outdoor rink. And it was great exposure for the team, for the community, but also really for Cambridge because they kept talking about how great uh, this mid-sized city had that small town feel and this commitment to small town, um, uh, you know, attitudes and, uh, and helping each other. And it was, uh, it was a nice way for us to get in the spotlight for uh, something really positive. Um, the old, old fashioned or old, old, old school hockey is what they kept calling it too. So I was pleased that we were able to work with the, with the high school to provide that experience. Um, and the ice rink reservations in general went through the roof this past year because uh, we have the only outdoor refrigerated ice rink for 50 miles around. So um, it was constantly in use. And I want to give a shout out to the public works, um, our parks and rec employees in particular, for having to uh, to keep the ice rink in tip top shape as much as possible, despite some really weird weather events that we had with uh, freezing rain and, uh, and, and incredibly slushy snow falling on top of ice and, and him having to work over, um, repeatedly at odd hours to try and keep that in a safe operating condition. So I want to give them a special thanks um, because the, with the reservations through the roof, we wanted to make sure everybody had a good experience when they came to Cambridge. Uh, we also have enhanced other outdoor park options because people need to get outside of their houses 
Um, so we added some additional pickleball courts as a part of the uh, streets project that we did last summer. We also began work on the Parkwood Park, which if you're not familiar where that is, it's kind of by the Walker Lavandi home. Um, that park, when it's complete, will have a shuffleboard, horseshoe pits, a wheelchair swing, a short walking trail around the outskirts of the park, and other outdoor exercise equipment. So that'll be a nice addition to that part of the city. Also, interestingly, it's not what we would have, uh, you know, imagined and dreamed of at the beginning of uh, 2020. But in June of 2020, just six months later, we were thrilled to be able to open our new Cambridge Public Library in the new space and what used to be the, uh, the Grandview Christian Homes. Uh, shout out to BJ Boss and company for doing an excellent job refurbishing the old building into a brand new library space that will serve us for the next 50 to 100 years and hopefully beyond. Um, but as I said, well, we didn't want to really have to do this during COVID. You know, you, you deal with what you'd have to deal with. And so as of June 2020, the new library is open for browsing, computer appointments, and material checkouts, which during a pandemic is surprisingly important again, because uh, people who are stuck indoors will have the ability to, to uh, check out materials and pick them up in a safe experience. We also have a lot more space in this building than we had in the other space. So socially distant computer appointments were available for people to be able to do uh, all those things that you'll have to move online, like these Zoom meetings that we're in now. If you didn't have a high quality uh, internet connection, well, you could get that at the library if you just reserved it ahead of time. So if you haven't had a chance to check out the uh, library space, you got to do that soon. There, it's a, It's a wonderful addition to our community. Other things that we worked on included the reconstruction of a few streets, uh, 16th Avenue and Old South Main being the stars of the project this last summer at a cost of a little over $5.2 million. You can see the before, that's uh, on the before picture, that's uh, 16th looking to the east. And then in the after picture, totally different. You wouldn't even know it's the same town, right? Um, so a number of improvements, not just a beautiful blacktop and striping, but also some trail improvements, sidewalks, curb and gutter, um, even some uh, trail extensions and so on connections, um, not just on 16th, but throughout uh, streets in that area that hadn't been worked on in uh, 50 years, maybe. We also worked on the new Cambridge water tower and that has been completed and is now storing uh, three quarters of a million gallons of water at a cost of about $2.1 million to our, uh, our water utility uh, fund that we use. Of course, the water tower improves our water storage capacity, but for me, and more importantly, I think that the fire flow, because if we ever had a significant uh, emergency management event, we would have uh, an adequate, I think, water flow now to fight a large fire like that. Because I, I think about Becker, when they had the, uh, I call it the junkyard fire, but it was the salvage yard fire recycling bin area. And they had to truck water in from communities all around because there just wasn't enough. I mean, they were using more water in an hour than they were able to pump um, in a day. So they needed to do that. Hopefully this will keep us from that similar situation. Heaven forbid we ever have to face a situation like that. And by the way, this water tower replaced a smaller water tower that you probably have seen over by the community garden and the uh, dog park area if you get over there. The uh, pandemic also kind of exposed something that we suspected was true, that we have a housing shortage in Cambridge, which is, I think, maybe a good problem to have unless you're Evan looking for a new place to live. So we have new workers new employees, new businesses opening up, and there was no place available for them to move into in the city of Cambridge. Um, we did a, a, a rental study recently, and our rental rate was 95.5%, which means, or I'm sorry, 99.5%, which means that if all the rental places that are out there, there was only 0.5% available for rent at any given time which makes it really hard to move into a new community to pursue new opportunities. And so um, last year we added a mixture of market rate and affordable housing 
We added 116 different dwelling units, including 56 single family homes, 24 town homes, and Roosevelt Gardens is open now with uh, 36 apartments. And we have to continue. I mean, 116 units is just a drop in the bucket for what we are looking at in uh, terms of housing uh, shortage. So uh, coming up in 2021 here, we have new housing coming online, including uh, Cambridge, Cro uh, Cambridge, Co I can't say it, Cambridge Cove, I should probably get a drink of water here, uh, which is out by County Road 14, kind of near Grace Point Crossing, um, sort of near the community college, if you can think where that area is by the stoplights there. That's where Cambridge Pro Cambridge Cove will be featuring patio townhomes and single family homes primarily out there. Also coming online, we have Heritage Greens of Cambridge over by 11th Avenue and Fern Street by, uh, the, by Central Green Park. They have 183 total units coming online here when all is said and done. Uh, the, that might be a couple of years down the road, but they are committed to the apartment building first, which will have 150 units and then townhomes as uh, time allows and opportunity allows, which will have 33 townhomes there at the Heritage Greens. And then Unique Opportunities LLC is putting up a 48 unit apartment building um, that is basically across the street from the county government center. Excuse me, I took a drink of water there. <clears throat> so that's some of the new housing that's coming in and that'll be a nice opportunity for our businesses um, because of course, as your customer base grows, businesses grow. And it's important that we maintain both um, a nice equilibrium so you have enough customers, enough employees available, and enough businesses to serve these new customers and new employees. And you have to strike a balance in your growth so that it's a reasonable amount of growth and sustainable. And so some of the new businesses that we have seen moved in, uh, moving in or about to move in, we have Harbor Freight announcing that they're going to be moving into the former Office Max building. We have a new sort of fast food casual restaurant that is moving into the former Sonic space. And they're gonna open, their plan is to open before the fall of this year. Um, the name has changed and I don't know what the new name, if this is good, it's gonna be. So I don't wanna name what it's going to be, but um, I think people will enjoy another dining option there. Um, also uh, a lot of wellness places and nutrition, maybe the COVID, uh, evac uh, COVID uh, crisis got people thinking about their health, but we have three different health businesses basically um, open over the last year. Uh, 915 South Main Street Nutrition opened, Getaway Wellness opened this year, and Swift Physical Therapy opened this year as well. So, or in 2020, I should say. And then this one has been generating a lot of excitement. I think uh, the things that you get phone calls and questions of as mayor, Quick Trip was the number one question um, that I was getting throughout the last oh, about two or three years, actually. Um, and they have, uh, we just approved the preliminary and final plat for the former Westrom's Corner area, soon to forever be known as the Quick Trip Corner, maybe. Um, they're going to be building starting in 2021. I don't think it's uh, going to be open until 2022 is their commitment to have it, uh, not this summer, but next summer. Um, but our first Quick Trip will be in Cambridge. And um, this will be the first of I believe three is what is on their plan. So Quick Trip is making a uh, quite a commitment to Cambridge with uh, this first store opening in the next year and a half. Now with uh, COVID, you know, those are some of the things that were growing and the city has also had to adapt and grow to face the crisis. And one of the things that we had to do because of restrictions was um, our city council meetings themselves were put online, just like this meeting is online. And there was uh, all the council members were at home basically using a Zoom meeting to conduct official city business. And even now, a year later, we still have Zoom meetings available for those council people and, and staff and so on that are in quarantine or are just unavailable to be in person. But our um, our numbers allowed in ch council chambers are still really limited. So how do we get people in the community to continue being involved in local government and know what's happening? Um, how do we stay transparent with all the decisions that we've been making? This is one thing that we are starting. Um, we're piloting this. Our first episode was March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. So what is that? A month and four days ago, uh, the chat. it's a podcast basically. Uh, podcast on various topics, uh, live Wednesdays at noon, 
Today's topic is act on Alzheimer's. Next week, uh, I'll be joining our finance director, Caroline Moe, and we're going to be talking about taxes and how we approach budgeting and setting the local levy and so on. So uh, if you're interested in that, you want to tune in next Wednesday at noon, or maybe after today, you've heard enough of me for one week. Um, but um, that's available any place that you get your, uh, your usual podcasts, uh, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, or of course, you can go directly to the uh, Cambridge webpage, the city webpage, and uh, there's links there. You'll be able to find uh, past recordings and the new episodes as they become available. So I'm kind of excited to see the response to that, to see if we are able to keep people engaged in our continued growth by being a little bit more transparent using modern technology. Um, part of that transparency is, of course, increasing social connectedness. And we began a chat bench. First uh, chat bench has opened in Cambridge this last summer. Uh, if you're not familiar with what a chat bench is, I bumped into these for the first time when I was in Montreal and Quebec, uh, not last summer, but the summer before when we were actually allowed to cross the border into Canada. And um, chat benches, basically it's a normal bench. And in the middle, there's a sign that says, if you'd like to have a chat, take a seat. And so um, they were using it as a way, especially for their elderly to have a chance to stave off loneliness because if their significant other or spouse has passed on, sometimes they're all by themselves in the house and this gives them a chance to be outdoors and have friendly conversation with people they otherwise maybe wouldn't have met. So by sitting on the chat bench, you're basically saying you're open to having a conversation. And so here you can see Linda is sitting on one end of the bench. You can have the other person at the other end and they would be appropriately social distance for safe conversation on the chat bench. We also uh, have in the past and will continue in the future to work on increasing social connectedness by having our summer concert series, our arts in the park series, and our summer kids programming, which uh, we will uh, show you a slide in a little bit here that has a listing of all those different things. Um, again, it's important to have these kinds of activities in my mind because if you don't do these community building activities, what you have is a collection of buildings and not really a town. And everybody says it's great to have that small town feel, but you have to work to maintain that, especially as we grow. Also excited to announce that in the fall of 2020, our Veterans Memorial Park opened. Uh, again, thanks to BJ Boss and a whole bunch of volunteers that uh, worked on the construction on this. Of course, our Veterans Memorial Park Committee did the lion's share of the work and the fundraising and so on. So a big thank you to them. I'm sure they would want me to mention to you that memorial bricks are still available and um, you should contact them if you would like to get one of your loved ones on the memorial wall. But in the picture here, you can see the five uh, branches of service represented by the flags. And then there's the little, the harder to see here, but these walls contain the names of our area veterans. And so it's a nice tranquil, um, space, a nice peaceful space to uh, just sit and reflect and remember and uh, kind of think about the blessings of peace that we're able to enjoy because of the sacrifices of so many. So I appreciate that that has opened. It's at, uh, by the way, it's at 2nd Avenue across from the old courthouse, you know, the 1800s courthouse um, near the old library. It's on the corner there. So you can find that pretty easily. As I said, we have on our schedule this year still the uh, fun activities for kids. You can see there, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but on June 15th is our first uh, fun kids activity, a touch of magic and clowning around. So they're educational and entertaining experiences for uh, our youth in our area city parks here. And we also have for kids of all ages, our summer concert series. That starts on June 3rd with Ole Olson. I'm sure many of you know Bruce Danielson and, and uh, company. They will be uh, presenting an old fashioned variety show for us in City Park. We also have uh, had food trucks sign up for the various days. So those uh, concert series that are taking place in City Park will have two food trucks available on a rotating basis. So the Barn Grill, the Parlor Ice Cream, Teppanyaki Grill, um, you know, think a big red wagon and so on will be there selling their wares. And then we also have a few concerts scheduled for the third Thursday events in downtown Cambridge. So June 17th and I think it's July 15th. Yep. 
July 15th, we have the Rock and Hollywoods coming in. They're always a big draw. <clears throat> They'll be in downtown Cambridge on Main and 2nd. Um, and of course, we won't have the food trucks there because we want you to partake of the downtown food businesses and support them. And then, of course, we also have our Arts in the Park classes. That's by registration. And so we have enough uh, materials set aside and so on. So if you are interested in painting in the park or the various art activities, take a look on our website or um, our newsletter or listen for further announcements about when registration for those are open. Of course, none of this would be possible without the continued cooperation of our city council. We truly are here to serve you. I just get the honor of being the mayor and helping run the meetings and helping set the agenda. But these people all work hard and have the best interests of the, of the citizens at heart. And uh, we work well together to try and bring future growth and prosperity to everyone in Cambridge. I'm going to single out Mark Zebarth here. He's our newest council member, elected this last fall and sworn in in January. And so uh, if there's any complaints, they go to Mark. Everything that's good comes to me. So, And I'm supposed to hear the laughter, but of course, everybody's mic is muted. So, um, so there you go. That's the council. Big thanks to them for working. And of course, um, we're just the, the tip of the iceberg, as you'd say, because we have a... a city staff that is also committed to serving the citizens of Cambridge. And none of these things happen without excellent staff work behind the scenes. Some things you uh, you see, uh, you know, when a police car goes by, obviously you notice the lights and so on, but you don't notice all the people behind the scenes that have made it possible for that police officer to be well equipped and trained, um, have funding for the car and, uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, our entire city staff has done a great job in difficult conditions over 2020, making sure that we have stayed safe and have kept our strength. But that means, speaking of staff, that we have to announce a new chapter coming to Cambridge on May 4th. You heard him talking about his new home uh, in the process of being purchased here. Evan Vogel will become city administrator on May 4th. He's now sitting in the assistant administrator's chair and working on community development and economic development and um, you know talk about drinking from an academic fire hose here he had a lot to learn in a short amount of time he came on board in october and has done a bang up job getting up to speed here um, as our assistant city administrator so that he can fill the city administrator's role because obviously now that means we have to say goodbye to linda wolf linda wolf is retiring after I want to say it was almost 20 years working in Cambridge and then other city government and uh, Minnesota League of Cities and so on before that. Um, so we will miss Linda greatly. Her years of expertise and leadership uh, have, are greatly appreciated. One of Linda's favorite quotes is from George Bernard Shaw and it's hung on a plaque in her office. And it says, I am of the opinion that my life belongs to the community. And as long as I live, it is my privilege to do for it, whatever I can. I want to be thoroughly used up when I die, for the harder I work, the more I have lived. And I believe, and I think the council and everybody would agree, that she did give everything that she had to the city of Cambridge, and uh, she will continue. She already said at the, her last city council meeting on Monday, that was her last regular city council meeting, she said, uh, you know, if we need anything, just give her a call. So she will continue to give to the city of Cambridge in the future. And I... Um, sad to see her go, but I'm glad that she's able to pursue this next phase of her life with her husband, Tony and family. And uh, we are doing a small socially distanced celebration of her graces and many talents on uh, before the city council on Monday, May 3rd, I think that is, or 4th, I guess. So um, we'll be having a lot of th things to praise her on at that time. So thank you for your time this afternoon. That is uh, the conclusion of the state of the city. And uh, again, I just want to make sure we wish Linda well and uh, publicly acknowledge everything that she's done for the city. Thanks, everybody. Excellent. Here out the applause <laughs> from behind the, the mute. Um, thank you, Mayor, for that great information. And 
I'm not sure if Linda is on today. We're hoping to say it to her personally, but um, I know there'll be other opportunities. Um, but to thank Linda for her contributions to the city um, and wishing her best on her new chapter and a warm welcome to you, Evan. We certainly look forward to working with you. And so I would like to open things up now for any questions or comments for the mayor or anyone else from the city. Well, first of all, I, I, yeah, thanks, Jim. Great stuff, great update, uh, very clear on what's going on. I'm excited about all the stuff that's happening. I love that you're sending all the complaints to your most junior member of the council. I think that's that's great wisdom there too. And I, and I love what you said about the intentionality that's needed uh, to get that small town feel. I think sometimes we think it just is naturally going to happen. Uh, so I love that you're, you're being intentional. But the question I have uh, for you, and I assume he's still on there, right? Is, is Jim still on Yeah, I just, uh, I just muted him. That's cool. I just couldn't see all the names with everybody. Too many people on here, which is great. Um, so, <laughs> so the question I have, I think, you know, obviously we're, we're in sort of this polarized place. A lot of people have, you know, on one side or the other of all of these different issues and all this kind of stuff. And that's, you know, in, in our community and everywhere as well. But the, the story of what you guys are all doing in Cambridge is so compelling, right? I mean, the stuff that you listed, the stuff that you didn't list, there's so much good stuff happening. There's so much small town feel happening yet. I think a lot of people don't see it either because they're, they got blinders on because of their polarization or they're just too busy or whatever it is. So I guess the question I have for you is how can any of us help spread the message of this? How can we help people sort of shift their thinking from just negative things to realizing all the great things that are happening in our community like how do we create a movement out of all of the great individual actions that have happened i guess um so you know i think people aren't like i have students i so i'm in my classroom here as you can see they're off at lunch it's not that they're not engaged it's just that they're so busy with so many things and i think that's true of uh of everybody who is going through a pandemic just trying to get through the other side. So they get so busy and locked into their own life that they don't really have time to think about how do they connect. So the biggest thing that we can do is just keep encouraging these sort of public activities, like go to the concerts, uh, get out and talk to your neighbors, go walk the dogs on our trails. Um, you know, just make sure that you are engaging anybody that you see and, and have a friendly hello. I mean, that's really what a small town feel is is that idea of being able to be out safely and see strangers and know that it's not a risk situation um and that, that goes a long ways towards making people feel committed to uh, to any town yeah that feeling of safe and being engaged and feeling a part of the community so um if people are moving in i encourage this to evan and other people who have moved in it's like get involved in our civic groups because you know, not only will uh, do great things, but you'll also meet great people because it's really the people of Cambridge and of Isani County that make this such a splendid place to raise kids and grow up. So, thank you. Sir. So, did that answer your question or was that the politician's answer? No, <laughs> that was good. I think, you know, ultimately, I just want to see more and more people realize the great stuff that's happening and not just the people that happen to attend one of these meetings. So, it's just, I, I want to see more and more people engage with it just like you do. So, thank you for that. And then I, you know, I want to add, too, that if you do have a problem, I mean, things occur. And uh, we're, you know, a collection of city employees. We don't see everything that happens. And let us know so it doesn't sit and fester. Um, if we are aware of a situation, we can do whatever we are allowed to do to try and ease the, the burden of that situation. So and that also helps people. Um, you know, you don't, you don't have problems blow up into these big things. They, they get taken care of early and with a minimum of fuss. But communication and all that is the key. Jim, this is Diane Rasmussen. Can you talk Thanks. a little bit about what you see over the next 12 to 24 months as kind of major pieces of work or larger priorities? Uh, for the city, we are gonna sit down in fact here, we start our budgeting process already in March. And uh, we set priorities and goals for, you know, two, five, and 10 years. Um, our goals this year is get through the COVID and see what we have to rebuild when it's done. Um, but in the long term, we talked about maybe making Second Avenue a, a pedestrian way. 
an idea that had just come up at our couple a couple meetings ago. Um, and so you know, Mayo has the pedestrian street right in front of it in Rochester. Maybe do something like that somewhere around and we have uh, events on it. You know, there's different kinds of things that we can do that are low cost to taxpayers. Um, ideas that we can, basically it all falls under the umbrella of making it a community, not just a collection of buildings, but a place that people come to enjoy their neighbors. And uh, so any initiatives we have would fall under the umbrella. Like we had talked about splash path and it's so expensive, but that would be a way to get uh, families engaged in town. Um, we're working on expanding Sandquist Park, softball fields and soccer fields and football fields, and bringing more people into the city to engage with their neighbors and stuff. So those are the priorities that we have right now. Um, you know, right now, it's just trying to ride the rock to the end of the COVID pandemic. But uh, soon, I think we'll be able to start dreaming of of more than just maintenance no. and how can we continue growth. I appreciate that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other comments, questions? Any other questions? I can give a comment. This is Carol Ann Smith. And uh, I'm really excited to hear about all the new housing that's being built. I did not know about that. So I think that's really exciting. And I just want to say that when I read in the County News Review about the outdoor restaurant seating opening again, I was extremely happy because that's how I spent my entire summer last year was meeting friends for what we called lawn chair lunches. And uh, it was really nice to be able to have the tent behind the Cambridge Bar and Grill and the place outside sign lighters to, uh, to meet friends. Yeah. Continue that Jim, it sounds like fashion. you're breaking off a little bit. You were frozen there for it, Melissa. Either that was a really good uh, imitation of a statue. Oh, <laughs> no, I think I think that maybe you're having, is your internet, but could you repeat what you just said? We didn't quite catch all of that. Oh, great. I thought it was you guys that froze. Here it was me. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I'm on the school internet, so you know if we have a whole bunch of kids jumping on a test or something, it might be slowing me down. I was saying, you know, it was brilliant. It was like smartest thing I said all day. I think I can remember what it was though. Oh, the uh, yeah, the outdoor dining that she was talking about is uh, it was hugely popular, and uh, they're looking for a way to maintain that in the future, so I find some way to keep it going. Yeah. Okay, push. Um, um, a question um, with the transition. Um, I did see an announcement about someone else new starting with the city. And I was wondering if you could just talk a little bit about, um, Evan, how your role will um, be going forward and with the new person. Hi, just high level is fine. Jim, did you want to take that or did you want me to take that? You know, I am having real connectivity issues here. So I turned my camera off. Why don't you go ahead and I'll listen and I can add in whatever you forget. Sure. So Melissa, if I understand your question, just asking about kind of the dynamic changes and things of that nature. Um, <clears throat> I will be um, taking over as city administrator effective May 4th. Um, and, and as such, we'll be um, handling the day-to-day -day operations for um, really kind of all, all city activity. And uh, the, the new um, assistant city administrator will be coming in to fill the role that was created when I came on board. And they will be responsible for um, being the department head for the community and economic development group. So they will be heavily involved with um, marketing for the city, uh, bringing on housing projects, bringing on, uh, bringing in additional businesses, and and working with uh, the businesses that we currently have. So, 
We've got a lot of projects going on right this minute, and, and it's going to be really important uh, that this person come in and um, get to know people and get to involve themselves in the community and, and make sure that those projects are seen through. Um, and then there's a couple uh, projects that the city would like to, to pick up in, in pretty short order, and um, it, will, it will be uh, up to up to that individual and and uh, council to try and advance um, other projects as well. So, did, did that answer what you're looking for, or is there is there a specific question that I can try? And... No, that that's exactly what I was hoping to hear. Thank you. Are there any other questions? I think we have time for probably one more. There's a quick question. This is Kirsten Bruss. I did have a question about if there's any update on the potential widening of Highway 95 through downtown. Ah, yes, that's one of my near and dear pet projects. I've been working on that for eight years or so now, um, even on the Planning Commission, trying to lobby the legislature. We have, it's shovel ready, it's ready to go. We just need the legislature to appropriate the actual funds for MnDOT to begin the project. So the holdup is legislature needs to either put it in the bonding bill or make it a priority in their uh, legislative uh, spending packages that they do in the other years to get the, uh, the funding available to have, make it actually finished. Jim, if you'd like, I can add just a bit to that as well. Sure. And then Mayor Godfrey, obviously. Um, the, this is a project that uh, Congressman Stauber is trying to advance on, on behalf of um, the city as well as uh, MnDOT has some funds available as well. It's a very high pri uh, priority project in the state and for the region. And with some of the dollars that have been made available for infrastructure because of the pandemic and some of the relief funds that have gone out, uh, th this is one that is, I think it's rated as the highest priority project in Isani County right now. And so it is It is um, looking like it, it could happen now that none of those funding sources are guaranteed at this point. So that um, may not, it may not happen as quickly as we'd like, but we, we are being told by a number of different sources that they are trying to make that project happen sooner rather than later. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and I welcome you, Mayor Godfrey and Evan, to stay on um, as we move into the questions and member announcements in case any further questions arise. Uh, but there for was, now, I'd like to... I'm sorry, there was one question that was put in chat to me directly, and I'll just want to address it really quickly here. It says, is there a reason why we cut down a large pine tree for Christmas every year? Um, so again, it goes back to that community thing by having a community Christmas tree. In the old days, we did sing along around it during the snowflake raid, which of course didn't happen. But it's a tree that has to come down anyway. So we're basically, re because it's either in the right of way or it's growing into the, the overhead lines, there are trees that are on city property for the most part uh, that it would have to be taken down anyway. So this way we are saving them for a secondary purpose as well as just taking them off, so. Excellent, All right, thank you for that. And again, um, we will conclude this portion and move into uh, member announcements and um, we can entertain any additional questions that might come up during that time if you uh, both are able to stay with us. So thank you very much. We appreciate your time and the great information that you've provided today about the city of Cambridge.